Hello everyone and welcome to another part of the lab series. Today we will be implementing IPsec tunnel into our laptop logic and play with it a little bit. Before we do that, let's quickly dive into the short explanation. What is an IPsec VPN? IPsec stands for Internet Protocol Security and it is a suit of protocols working together to ensure data confidentiality, integrity, encryption and authentication. IPsec is the reason why we call VPNs Virtual Private Network, simply because it creates secure virtual tunnel over any network infrastructure. This is especially useful when we need to transfer data securely over public networks. Briefly described, it happens in two phases, IC Phase 1 and IC Phase 2. IC stands for Internet Key Exchange and it is a protocol used to set up Security Association, SA. The aim is to start with asymmetric encryption, use it to safely exchange symmetric keys and encrypt all traffic with it. In one of my previous videos I have showed you how to deploy FortiGate on VMware Workstation and how to connect VMware Virtual Machine to GNS3. I would strongly encourage you to watch it before starting. I'm going to use this deployment because its main advantage is to preserve RAM and CPU. Magic of this deployment is that you can run it on demand. So now let me quickly show you what is the settings on FortiGate Virtual Machine deployment which I have. FortiGate port 1 is linked to VMNet 4 which is bridged to physical network, same network as is this cloud. Port 9 and 10 are linked to virtual adapters with addressing space which I will show you in Virtual Network Editor. You can simply add them by clicking Add Network and I have assigned addressing space which is going to be used on FortiGate. And let's start it up right away. Connecting FortiGate VM deployment to GNS3 is easy. Just grab a cloud, select your PC as a server. In cloud configuration, click checkbox Show special Ethernet interfaces and add virtual adapters to the list. In my case it is going to be VMNet 2 and 3. For easy recognition I am going to name this cloud RFGT as Remote FortiGate. For me VMNet 3 is going to be one interface, therefore I am going to connect it with the Cisco router. On VMNet 2 I am going to have local network and for now I will simply attach GNS3 virtual PC to it, for testing purposes. And with that this is all you need to do to have functional remote testing environment. Everything what is going to happen on dashboard now is just visual. So I'm going to change the icon to something appropriate and then speed it up. I have visually adjusted lab to look like this and this connection in red is just for better orientation. It does not need to be there and you can achieve it by attaching switch, which does not go anywhere and change of icons. To configure remote FortiGate simply open browser and my deployment is listening on 192.168.199 because I have previously assigned this IP address to this VM. This is covered in video which I have already mentioned, link is in the description. Right away we can start with configuration on port 9 which is interface facing Cisco router. IP address is going to be 10.100.11.3 with classic 24-bit subnet mask, followed by allowing administrative access. And I am going to allow a lot because 12 belongs to network which is controlled by us. My next goal is to establish connectivity between this FortiGate and our HA cluster. For that I am going to use OSPF and I am going to configure Cisco router first. Under interface gigabit 3 slash 0 don't forget to type in no shutdown. IP address on this interface is going to be 10.100.11.4, following with 24-bit subnet mask. All 
open OSPF configuration mode with router OSPF1 and I'm going to quickly check what is currently configured here. I can see that command in use does not cover OSPF advertisement for freshly configured interface gigabit 3.0, so adjustment is going to be needed. Copy paste command and place no in front of it, which will remove it from configuration. In my adjustment I am going to modify wildcard mask, which is going to tell router advertise on every interface which start with 10.100. And that is going to cover our interface gigabit 3.0. Save configuration and we can do simple connectivity test to our remote FortiGate. Remote FortiGate is responding and with that we are done on router 3. Now let's return back to remote FortiGate and configure OSPF there. Router ID is going to be 0004 and it is going to be part of area 0. Advertised networks are going to match with those which are configured on WAN and LAN interfaces. And finally add interfaces so we can select which is going to be passive. To this interface I'm going to assign obvious name because this is going to be port 9. Name local is for port 10 and exactly on this interface we don't want to send hello packets. In video I forgot to do that, so click on passive interface. Shortly after clicking apply you should be able to see pop-up neighbor. Same thing should be observed on Cisco router as well. At this point, connectivity between our HA cluster and remote FortiGate should be established, and we are going to verify that with pinging other side. Perfect, other side is responding, and now we can proceed to configure a VPN tunnel. As usual, HA cluster is configured from Kali Linux virtual machine. So let's jump there. The configuration is going to happen in our forwarding VDOM route. And this time I'm going to use Wizard leaving manual configuration for future projects. For troubleshooting purposes I would always recommend to use naming convention which is obvious. Therefore name is going to be shortcutted to remote FortiGate. Here we are going to write down IP address of the peer. And here pick up password which is going to be used to authenticate with the peer. In policy and routing tab also configuration of phase 2 sectors happen, in which we define local and remote local subnets.
And for those which are interested in manual configuration, Wizard is kind enough to show list of operations required to configure one side. As you see, it is quite a lot. Scroll down a bit, click create and we are ready for other peer in where mirrored configuration will be applied. Just to quickly point out, it is this one and it is opened in the browser of my physical PC. Remote peer, this time is our HA cluster, therefore name is going to be to HA. IP address is going to be 10.100.10.3. Pre-shared key needs to match with the key from other side. And here are phase 2 selectors, but this time reversed. Now let's jump to dashboard, subsection network and click on the IPsec widget, where we are going to play with the tunnel a bit. With right click, bring up all phase 2 selectors, I am going to bring up the tunnel. Green indicators means tunnel is working without problems, so let's do some testing. In GNS3 virtual PC, I am going to obtain IP address with the command IP DHCP and do simple ping to the remote local subnet. This was Windows PC which refused to reply because operating system firewall. I wanted to point out that this is something which you need to deal with as a network admin. Next ping will be sent to our Kali Linux machine and that should be without problems. Now let's play, I have brought this tunnel down and I am going to run some incredible tools which help you to see what is happening in the background. I am going to start with sniffer and sniff traffic filtered to peer IP and 500 port. In the next CLI window I will prepare a set of commands focused on Ike debugging. Now let's bring tunnel up and watch magic happening. Let's take a look on debug first. And I can see phase 2 negotiation exchange captured. I would encourage you to run same commands and watch it little longer, just to see entire process by yourself. That is if you find few minutes of your time. Which brings me to the point how to capture phase 1 negotiation which already happened even though I brought down the tunnel manually. And I am going to show you in few seconds. Before we do that, let's quickly take a look on sniffer as well. And here we can see what is expected on fully functional tunnel, a bidirectional UDP traffic. Ok, let me show you another useful command to print brief tunnel information. And the command is diagnose VPN Ike gateway list name and name of your tunnel. Besides other useful information, you should see if tunnel is established as a part of phase 1 tunnel check. Ok, now we are going to emulate pretty common scenario. Let's pretend we have evil ISP in the middle which is filtering port 500. <laughs> For that I am going to open console of the router 2 and configure access list which will prevent every traffic with destination port 500 to pass. Extended access list will give us exactly this option. And command is going to be deny UDP from any source to any destination 
on destination port 500. And of course, because of implicit deny, at the bottom of every access list we have to permit everything else, otherwise everything will be blocked. Right after that, we are going to apply access list at the interface gigabit 1 slash 0 with command IP access group name of your access list in. And now let's take a look on the tunnel's behavior once again. I am going to bring it down and use same tools again. Let's close our previous observation so we can start over. And just like before I am going to start with sniffer. And right away you can see attempts of phase 1 negotiation, but this time traffic is unidirectional. Alright, now let's take a look on the Ike debug. And as you can see this time behavior is different, we can observe already a retransmit and there is going to be a bunch of them as a result of blocked port 500. This will repeat few times until we see negotiation timeout, deleting connection expiring due to phase 1 down. Let's try to bring tunnel up again so I can show you. And here it is. Before we wrap this up, let's remove this block which we applied and with that I am going to say goodbye and see you in another video.